Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And if you should see something of yours shown on this channel, just leave me the Steam Workshop link somewhere and I'll eventually get around to it. But for today, we're looking at a, another fairly sizey ship. And this one is called the Nebula Mark III, which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a hydrogen powered ship that has plenty of guns all the way around the outside, a small hangar to store a ship, and absolutely everything you need to survive in survival mode. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is, this thing is 1916 large blocks using the decorative block number 1 and number 2 DLC packs, Frostbite, Economy Deluxe and Sparks of the Future. So we basically have all the DLC packs on this ship. So what we're going to do is have a quick look around the outside, then we'll go for a tour of the interior, and it is quite a large interior when you go all the way through it. There's lots of little sneaky passages everywhere. Yes, we'll go have a tour of that, and then we'll spawn in the ship and have the turrets shoot something down. So at the very front here, all the way here, we have ourselves a connector. A connector that is attached onto a piston for you to extend out and connect up to a station or another large ship. We have a camera that sits just next to it to help aim the connector to make sure you're not going to miss a line and perhaps damage it. And just below that we've got ourselves another camera to help fly this thing around. If I just zoom out and start moving around the side here we're going to see some nice block work and the start of many a turrets. So around the side over here we've got our name of ship spelled out on the side with our brand new letter blocks and then just below here if I was to turn off my light we're going to see some blinking blue lights that go on the pattern from the front all the way to the back of the ship. We have a spotlight that is shining straight down which is quite useful when you're trying to land this thing in the dark and we can see some atmospheric thrusters just to help out when you're on a planet. Continuing along we've got some more blinking blue lights and you probably saw it there we do have a blinking reddish light somewhere over there. We've got some oxygen farms to make sure we're not going to waste our ice making oxygen and then moving all the way around over to here we've got some more sneaky hydrogen thrusters just sitting in this little area. Zooming out and continuing along we're going to see some more hydrogen thrusters as well as some more lights that go all the way along. So we've got some blinking white lights and some more blue lights. Just below this part here we're going to see some more abstract thrusters and a massive array of hydrogen to help us lift away from my planet with another sneaky spotlight just hidden away in there. Moving around and going towards the back of this ship, we're going to see our main thrust, which is going to be two large hydrogen thrusters and four small hydrogen thrusters, as well as some extra atmospheric, just in case you need that extra oomph. So at the very back, we have another connector, and the connector I don't think is connected onto a piston, it is simply directly attached onto a hydrogen tank. To the left of that we've got a camera to help aim that up or to help assist the ship docking with you to make sure you're not going to get damaged. And just below that we've got ourselves a small seating area. Not recommended if you're in space unless you have plenty of oxygen bottles on you but it's good for an Earth-like planet where you can just come over here and have a nice relaxing time on the chairs and look at your surroundings. Yes we've got some stairs that come up to some doors which will lead inside but we'll come back to that a bit later. Moving up to the top, we've got some more blinking blue lights that go off on a fairly longish time. So there we go, there they go again. And just above our hydrogen thrusters, we've got some nice glowing red lights. Moving along the top there, we've got some lovely catwalks, which is just above our tank, which is how those green lights are clipping through. Then we've got another set of stairs, which should come over to a door, which is going to help us get in and out. And we can see a jump drive hidden away below that catwalk. We've got two jump drives on this thing so we can jump just over 2,000 kilometers with the weight of the ship included. So yes, we are going to be good for some long range trading. Coming up and above, we've got some Gatling turrets and we can see even more hydrogen thrusters as well as some more blinking blue lights. Moving towards the back of the ship or the front of the ship, in fact, we're going to see some unfinished wheels or spotlights. I can never remember what those blocks are. And attached onto them, we've got some antennas. We've got two of them just for some symmetry but it also helps if one gets damaged. Continuing along, we'll be able to see another camera which is going to be sitting just in front of our bridge, right here, and some unfinished spotlights just clipping inside. At least that's what I think they are. 
Anyway, coming down and below here, this is our bridge as well as our living quarters just below. So over to here, this is going to be our living quarters where we've got everything we need to have a nice relaxing time in space. And just above here, this is our bridge where we're going to fly this. It's got a very fancy thing. In fact, I'll show you that right now. If I just come around to here and paste my character in and then hit this button over here, look at that. It folds down on a timer block and then opens up and then the LCD screens turn on to give you a fantastic view all the way around. So there we go. We can see our hydrogen, our speed, our weather, as well as the time. That's a very neat little thing. Yes, we'll come back to that when we go for a proper tour of the interior. But that is our bridge, and then just continuing along to the front, we've got an ore detector right there just to help us collect up some ore. And there is our hangar bay doors to allow us to go in and out. It's a fairly small one, so we can fit a small fighter in, or a small miner, depending on what you want to do. Yes, we have a reasonable amount of room, I'd like to say. And then that is about it. So bringing the character back outside, here we go. We do have a gravity generator, so I'm not just going to float away into space when my jetpack runs out. But we need to come inside. Now there are a few ways where we can do this. We can come through the hangar bay right there. We can come through this area right here, the very back. Or we can come down underneath and we'll have this part right here. Well, we've got another hangar door, so we can come up and press this button. And it'll open up and allow us to come inside. Dropping down and just hitting that button once again. There we go. We can now walk up these steps. And we're instantly greeted by an interior turret. To make sure we're not some sneaky pirate trying to sabotage this ship. We've got some cargo freight crates over here to saw a few bits and bobs inside if you want. And we do have a warning sign here. Which is where our thrust is sitting right behind. Turning around and coming through here we've got a doorway to act as a small airlock. And then we've got some half stairs to come all the way up and around that will take us into the main body of the ship. So this is going to be where we connect up to our living quarters and connect up to our reactor and hangar bay. So turning around we'll go to the hangar bay first of all. So coming through here we come past our cargo containers with a lovely green light. Another encouragement turret right there. And we'll come across over to here. We've got a button panel which has been set up for the hangar bay doors, the air vent and some lights. Coming through into here, this is our hangar bay. We've got some window blocks just covering up some oxygen tanks on the floor. Some conveyors going along. We've got a connector right there just to connect ourselves up. We've got some seats because we can use this at a trading area. And another encouragement turret. We've got a camera just behind there so you can keep an eye on the people inside here. And we've got some decoration in the form of some planters. We've got our contracts vendor and our store on this side. And then walking all the way around over to here, we then got our ATM and our vending machine. Coming around to here, we've got a button panel, which is going to be for our hangar bay doors, our air vents, our lights, and a switch lock for our connector right there. So pressing that, we're going to open up and allow people to get in and out and do some trading, or to release your fighters in an emergency. Let's go ahead and close that up, and then come through here. So coming all the way back through here, if you notice the doors are closing automatically, that's because I added in the auto door and airlock script, just to make sure they close up behind me in case I forget. Yes, back in this room, there is a programmable block I was talking about and I added in the script myself. We've got a button panel right here, which is going to be for our door to turn it on and off so no one can get in and out now. And then we've got controls for our hangar bay doors, but that is not for the one in our hangar, but rather the personnel door down there. We've got controls for our air vents and a light once again. Turning around, we've got ourselves a seat where we've got some controls for our hangar door, which is once again the personnel door down there. And we've got a fancy camera to help view it so we can make sure it's either open or closed. Number three is a camera to view inside where our gyroscopes are being kept. Four for our gravity generator. Five for control over our interior turret in case it's not doing a good enough job. And coming out of that, six, seven, and eight are for our lights once again. Coming out of that and turning around, we've got an armory locker over here to store some ammunition in, in case you need it. Then looking up and around, we've got a survival kit over there. We've got some LCD screens with some writing on it. And yes, we've got a way where we can go up or we can go through there. Switching the lock like that, let's now come through here where we're going to come to our engine room, which is filled up with gyroscopes and our jump drives. There is a camera we saw earlier and we've got ourselves another button panel. This one is for the doors once again, our air vents, lights, and then refineries. Walking around the right, 
we can see our conveyors going along there as well as our thrusters and hydrogen tanks. Looking across here, this is our jump drive, opening up this doorway and coming through. This will then lead us out the back behind our hydrogen thrusters over to the sitting area we saw earlier. So there we go. And we just come through this door and go back inside. Opening that up, closing that, there we go. Now we can walk all the way through into here and it's time to head on up. So coming up our half stairs onto some catwalks, we can look around here and come all the way up past that cryopod right there. Coming up these steps is going to lead us to the main portion of the ship where it's going to go to our living quarters, our bridge and to another exit. So on our left we've got some more controls for our lights and turning off the med bay and all that. Turning around and coming up to here we then have a welcome aboard the nebula and two cryopods on both sides for a quick little recharge. Turning around and coming over to here first of all we've got some good use of our passengers in a wooden texture and then opening up this way we'll come to our dormitory where we're going to sleep. So we've got some beds on either side, we've got our locker there to gear up and a freight crate to store some stuff. We can see our jump drive right there and around we've got some showers and some toilets. Coming all the way through here and past this part we then got our air vent which is how we're going to be pumping this area full of oxygen and around over to here we've got ourselves a secondary toilet. Moving all the way around and through here once again we'll come to the opposite side which is going to be our medical bay. So opening up this side we're going to be greeted by our proper medical bay block. Then we've got a small chair with a table so we can do our work on there and another armory locker right there. Turning around and coming back through. We now come past our corner chair, some auction tanks into our living quarters. We've got some sofas going all the way around the room. We've got ourselves a small bar to grab ourselves some Clang Cola. An LCD screen showing us our fancy new LCD screen little image. Then turning around, we've got ourselves a projected table and a button panel just in front of it. Now we've got some fancy stuff with this button panel. This one over here is going to make ourselves nice and blue inside. This one over here is going to give ourselves a nice little creamy light. This one is going to turn the LCD screens on and off. And this one will turn on our projected table to display some space credits. Turning around, we've got ourselves a jukebox to play some music and some planters and a decent view out the front. So there we go. We've got ourselves a vending machine over on this side to grab ourselves some clan cola if you have the spare credits. And on the opposite side, there was nothing much. So it's a very nice little area, very neatly set up who to live your life in. But coming all the way around through here, it's time for us to come up these steps. And we'll just come through the blue door first of all. So through here, we've got ourselves an airlock, another little armory locker, and a small area with an air vent. And this will just lead us outside. That is just above that area where we can go and sit. Coming back through here, once again. There we go, we can now come up to here where we've got another cryopods to recharge ourselves. Turning around and on this side we've got ourselves a small kitchen. We've got a small vending machine to buy your clan cola with. A table to eat your food on and then our kitchen block to cook our food on. That's very nice. Turning around and coming back through it's time to go up the steps and head towards our bridge. So all the way up to here we've got ourselves a, another little meeting area where we can have some drinks with this little bar block. We can look outside the window at our hydrogen thrusters and turrets. Over on this side another projected table projecting the space engineer's symbol as well as a corner chair, a planter and another button panel which is going to be for our turrets on and off, our projected table on and off and some more light controls. Moving towards this side we've got ourselves another programmable block which is currently doing nothing so there we go we can freely use that if we wanted to and we've got another encouragement turret next to your bed and toilet. So you can't misbehave in here or you're going to get shot up. Yes, coming through this doorway, this is our bridge and like we saw earlier we can press number 3 on this button panel to deploy our LCD screens where it will fall out and turn on and show you everything you need to know. Number 4 would be to retract that and tuck it up all nice and neatly and then for these two buttons it's coming through the door on and off and for our lights. So that's your emergency lock, no one can get in and out and then we can come back to here and turn it on. Let's just go and deploy that once again. I appear to have buggered that. Alright so I fixed this up by spawning in a new one and so it's time to go and have a proper look around the bridge. So going around here we've got a window blocked for you in there. We've got a small seat for your passengers to go on. We've got some 
extra control seats here which this one is going to be for our jump drives to control how far you're going to jump and if it's recharging on and off. On the opposite side we then got another control seat which is set up to control all the lights around the ship as well as some controls for our turrets and whatnot. So number one will be to view the doorway once again with similar controls for the air vents, lights and to open it up and to close it. We then got six, seven, eight and nine which is manual control over our interior turrets all throughout the ship. And on tab number three we then got some controls for our cameras to view everywhere. Walking around that seat and coming over to the front we can look down at the living quarters below as well as the front of our ship. And then turning around and getting into the cockpit which is the last thing to do this is what we get. So our LCD screens have been deployed in front of us and we can still have a decent view all the way around. Looking up that is what we get. Bringing up the HUD we then have controls over our hydrogen thrusters on and off. But those hydrogen thrusters are only going to be controlled at the front there to allow for a cruise control. Number two is for our landing gear on and off. Three and four is for our cameras. So the one just above our bridge and the one just below it. Five and six for our connectors forward and backwards. And on tab number two we then got a button to jump. But we can currently jump 48 kilometers which isn't that impressive. So we will have to come into here, find our jump drives and increase the range where we can jump just over 2000 kilometers with two jump drives. Four and five is control for our hydrogen thrusters, so turning them all off, like so, and to turn them all on. Seven is to stockpile our hydrogen tanks, and number eight is to deploy our piston at the front there to extend it out to make sure we can connect up without damaging our ship. Let's just pull that back in. On tab number three, we've got cameras galore, so we can view absolutely everything through the ship. There we go. And then on tab number four, we've then got another jump just in case you needed an additional one. So that all done and out of the way, it's time to have a thruster test. So going forwards, this is what we get. We got quite a lot of speed going forwards there thanks to those large hydrogen thrusters. Stopping as well is very good thanks to all the hydrogen thrusters dotted around this ship. There we go. Going left. And going right, we got a reasonable amount of speed. Going down. And going up. Going up has one hell of a lot of speed there, going down not so much. And then wiggling my mouse around, we've got a fair amount of control over this. It doesn't have much weight to it, but it has just enough to feel like you're flying a ship and not a piece of paper. But with that all done and out of the way, I think it's time to bring in the good old Albatross. So finding wherever the ship has gone, there it is. Let's just press F10, find the Albatross, and then bring this in once again. And have it shoot up the ship and see what happens. And there we go, I've now given the ship to the space pirates. I'm now going to start attacking it. One thing I did forget to do on the Albatross is give it some ammunition. So I'm gonna have to do that right now. So while it's just blasting away is it, let's just come over to here and paste in some ammo. So there we go, let's just go and spawn that in there. And there we are, they've instantly taken it. And now they're gonna start attacking each other. So the Gatling guns are going. And the Nebulas is starting to attack it with its rockets because it comes ready with the rockets and Gatling gun ammunition inside it as well as a few bits of resources in. The Nebula is still going. Now the Albatross does heavily outgun it. In fact, I'm on the wrong side here. I need to be up here. I think one of them is upside down. Yes, the Albatross is upside down. That's now going to start blasting into it. And how's it doing? It's been taking quite a few hits there. It's starting to work at the front there, so it's coming all the way through here and going into the hangar bay, which is okay. It doesn't matter if you lose the hangar bay or not. It just depends if it starts to shoot the back, where all the important stuff is. As for the Albatross itself, they're working at the very front here, going for the tanks and the batteries. Yes, they're just going to keep attacking each other. And there we go. But anyway, that is it for the Nebula Mark III. It's a very nice ship if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. There'll be a link to it in the description below, as well as a link to the Skybox I'm currently using. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.